Right, so I'm going to tell you how tough the, uh, the Tour de France can be for a clean rider. Now this is Paul Kimmage, rough ride, um, you know, clean athlete, um, up until the 87 Tour. I think he did dope, he did take amphetamines a couple of times after um, the Tour de France, uh, from what I'm reading. So, um, but I think he was kind of riding the, uh, the 87 Tour clean. Um, so he came under in 1986, that was his first year as a full-time professional. Um, I think he was like semi-pro the year before. But um, so he just he was um, right um, riding in the Tour de France, and um, you know he came 133rd out of 132 finishers um, in the 1986 Tour de France. Um, that's not to say he came second last. There are some other guys who would have. Um, I think there's like 210 people who uh, started, and uh, so some of the people would have dropped out. Other people would have um, missed out on the time limits. They have like certain time limits. If you don't get a time limit, then you're disqualified. So yeah, I'm bringing it up about Paul Kimmage, and um, you know he was cycling, and he was. At one stage, he was just going really badly. Now, 87, that was, you know, a big tour for, for Ireland, you know, because um, that was um, the year Stephen Roach won. He's the only Irish uh, rider to ever win the Tour de France. Um, and he's from Dundrum, up the road from where I live. Um, I think, you know, like, it's just like a mile up the road. And, um, yeah, if you look outside the town centre, they have a plaque commemorating him. Um, in 1987, he won the Giro d'Italia, the Tour de France, and the World Championships. So that was a good year for him. And, um... So, yeah, Paul Kimmage, um, this year he was riding, and I think at one stage, I don't know what stage it was, but he was completely dying. You know, he's climbing up, he's going up a climb, and um, I think, you know, he there was two guys behind him, they outpassed him, and there was, like, just a car behind, I think there's, like, the car or a truck for, like, which is just, it just stays behind the, the rider who's in last place. I don't know why that is, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but, uh, so... You know, Paul Kimmage, he ended up getting outpassed by some tourist. And the tourist, he said the tourist was going at twice his speed, you know, because he was so burnt out and exhausted by the stage. Um, so, yeah, this is why uh, steroids and testosterone uh, are important for uh, these kind of races. They give you more, like, energy. Uh, they help prevent you from burning out in these races. They help you recharge yourself, uh, keep going. And 87, I heard 87 was the year EPO came out in the black markers, according to Durian Rider. Uh, so I'm not sure if all if how many riders were using them. Um, it's probably only like a select few starting out, and then it got more popular as time went on. I imagine. So yeah, he ended up dropping out. He started crying in the middle, <laughs> in the middle of it, you know. Uh, and he he dropped out, and um, he said he felt a lot of shame for dropping out. Um, you know, but um, his coach just said, "Oh, you did the best you could do," you know. And um, yeah, that, that's the thing. It's a very tough thing if you're um clean. If you're clean, your body just might not be able to handle it. You might just break down like that. And, uh, you know, that's why the drugs are so rampant um, in the sport, you know, because, you know, I'm sure there were clean athletes who were better than Paul Kimmage, but, you know, it just shows you how tough it can be if you're a clean athlete, you know.